Good evening, Singapore, and to all our viewers across the globe. Greetings to you, our friends, partners, and supporters. Welcome to Bayanihan Talks webinar series. I am Minerva Lau, a member of the board of the Philippine Bayanihan Society Singapore, and your host. We hope that you are all keeping safe and well. Tonight, the topic is a very important one and very relevant to all the OFWs, not only in Singapore, but everywhere else. It is important because it refers to exercising the right to vote in a democratic country, which means the right to choose the leaders who will, who will govern the country. It is relevant because everyone will get to exercise that precious right to vote in 2022. Our speaker tonight is none other than the Philippine Comelec spokesperson himself, Mr. James Jimenez. But before we proceed, please allow me to introduce our Philippine Benihan Society here and give you a glimpse of who we are and what we do. On behalf of the Board of the Philippine Bainihan Society in Singapore, I welcome you to the Bainihan Centre. The Bainihan Centre has opened its doors to support the educational, social and cultural needs of Filipinos and others in Singapore. Thanks to the strong partnership between the Government of the Philippines and Singapore and the initiative of our founding President Ms. Jenny Chua and Vice President Mr. Ning de Guzman. Since its establishment in 2001, more than 13,500 people have undergone skills training at the Bainihan Centre. But the Bainihan Centre is located at 43 Pasir Panjang Road. It provides classrooms, facilities and support for volunteers and community groups to conduct various short-term courses including basic and advanced computer training, nursing aid, hotel and restaurant management, dressmaking, caregiving, cooking, and baking and cosmetology. To foster the socio-cultural ties between Filipinos and Singaporeans, we also organise the Bainihan Walk. It is an annual event to bring together people from all across sectors of Singapore in a fun walkathon to promote integration of Filipinos with the Singaporean community. Tarana Mak Bainihan Centre na. Everyone now has a better understanding of what the Bainihan Society is and what it does. We, the board members of the society, are all volunteers sharing the desire to contribute to the betterment of every OFW. Please do not hesitate to approach us for any training or skill ideas or cultural activity suggestion. Just contact our Bainihan Center officers, Cecil and Mindy. We have indeed a special speaker today, and we also have a special guest moderator, Mr. Wilford Wong. Wilford is the chief of staff to our Philippine ambassador, Joseph Delmar Yap at the Philippine embassy. He has been serving the government for almost 12 years in different capacities. Currently, he assists the embassy in its different projects to be able to serve our Kababayans in Singapore. May I now call Mr. Wilford Wong to introduce our guest speaker. The floor is yours, Will. Thank you, Ms. Mini. Thank you, PBSS, uh, for this uh, opportunity to work with you and uh, for the COMELEC, to, uh, especially with our guest, uh, guest resource speaker. Without further ado, Director James Jimenez helms the Education and Information Department and is also the, the Commission's official talking head. Spanning almost two decades, the Comelec, his COMELEC career is best, seen in the, is best seen in the light of his continuing efforts to expand the election body's digital media footprint. The verified Facebook and Twitter accounts of the Commission are early testaments to this. The Voter Care Operations, his brainchild, launched in 2016, is scaling up its social media engagement in preparation for the 2022 polls. 
external partnerships for digital projects such as the magparehistroka.com website are utilized and maximized at no cost to the commission. Spock's James, who prefers to be called Uncle James, can also be heard on the radio, especially during election season. Tune in to the Comelec R in your area at DZRH every Saturdays at 3 in the afternoon. Our kababayans in Singapore, Director James Jimenez or Uncle James. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much for uh, being here. Good evening, Wilford. Good evening, Ma'am Mini. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you to the Bayanihan uh, Society. Okay, you, sir. Yeah, you, may, okay. you may start your presentation and uh, we'll follow with a question and answer. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for, for joining us tonight. It's a, it's a great pleasure for me to be here to speak with you. And tonight, uh, we're going to talk about voter registration. As you know, we're going to have elections very soon, um, May 9, 2022 uh, in Manila. But of course, you'll have a different uh, voting period here abroad, no? So we'll we'll talk about voter registration really quickly, lang, because I really want to get to the questions that you might have, and and you know, I want to I want to spend more time uh, answering those questions than anything else. So, um, if you're overseas, then you're able to exercise your vote through what we call the overseas voting system. All right. Uh, the commissioner in charge of the overseas voting system is Commissioner uh, Maria Rowena Amelia Viguanzon. She would have loved to be here, um, but of course, with everything else going on in the Philippines, medyo ako muna, no? Ako muna. I hope you don't mind. So let's talk about um, overseas voting. Overseas voting is based on the Constitution. The Constitution of the Philippines itself provides that uh, there will be an overseas voting system, basically saying that um, the right to vote should not be contingent on any accident of location, right? So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you're a Filipino citizen, if you are um, eligible to vote, then you should be able to vote. Uh, in, 20, in 2003, a day before my birthday, February 13, Congress signed a, uh, the president signed into law Republic Act 9189, which provides for a system of overseas voting by qualified citizens of the Philippines. And, and those that's, that's basically you guys, right? So you're the qualified citizens um, of the Philippines living abroad who can vote in local elections. Okay. Um, we also have other laws which uh, sort of circle the same thing. Um, Republic Act 10590, for example, amended 9189, sort of updated it um, to, to, um, to adjust certain things, uh, basically removing old requirements so that it will be easier for you now to register. You see, in 9189, it was required that in order for you to register as a voter, you would have to submit uh, a manifestation of intent to return within three years. That was seen as, as one, of the, one of the reasons why people were kind of hesitant to, to sign up for overseas voting because people were not sure if they were going to come back after three years. So Republic Act 10590 drop that requirement among other things and now it's 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 freer right it's it's a little more welcoming this overseas voting system all right so so that's that that's basically where we're coming from in terms of the law so let's talk about the all important thing how do you how do you become part of the overseas voting system well obviously you, you, get, you become part of the overseas voting system through registration. What does that entail? Okay. So first of all, in order, in order to register, uh, in order to qualify 
as an overseas voter there. In order to qualify as an overseas voter, you need to be abroad or will be abroad during the 30-day voting period. All right? Let me, let me unpack that for a while. Voting in the Philippines happens every second Monday of May, right? In 2022, that'll be May 9. But for overseas voting, you guys are going to vote 30 days in advance. You have a voting period of 30 days prior to May 9 or prior to Election Day in the Philippines. So in 2022, your voting period actually starts April 10 and runs all the way up to May 9, which means starting April 10, you can now start to vote, right? You can vote and you can vote at any time from April 10 to May 9. Subject, of course, to scheduling with the, with the embassy or the consulate, but in general, within that period, right? So that's the first and most important qualification. If you know that you're going to be abroad during that 30-day voting period, then you're well on your way to joining the overseas voting system. Second, you must obviously be at least 18 years of age, right? And this is a standard requirement even in the Philippines. You have to be 18 years of age. And third, you must not be disqualified by law. By this, we mean you must not have been convicted of any crime involving moral turpitude. You must not have been declared incompetent by a court. You must not have been declared insane. Mga ganyan, right? So it's kind of um, kind of legalistic, that requirement, but it's there. So in, in general, the requirements are simple. You have to be abroad during the, during the voting period. And second, you have to be at least 18 years old. Now, who may not register? Okay? Sinong hindi pwede magparehistro? Right? So first, those who have lost their Filipino citizenship. Again, this is obvious because you have to be a citizen in order to register. So if you've lost your Filipino citizenship, then sorry, you cannot vote. Okay? The second, second condition that, that will not allow you to register is when you've renounced your citizenship or you may have pledged allegiance to a foreign country. It's hard to maintain the allegiance to two masters, sabi nga nila, right? So if you've, if you've given up, if you've renounced Philippine citizenship, and you've pledged allegiance to a foreign country, well, you've also given up your right to vote. Okay? So here's what you're saying. Convicted in a final judgment by a court of an offense punishable by imprisonment of not less than one year. Okay? And then previously declared insane or incompetent by competent Philippine authority or abroad. Okay? So these are the disqualifications mentioned by law. If you don't fit in any of these categories, then it's a pretty straight shot for you to get registered. So where can you file your application for registration? Well, seeing as how you're overseas, you can file your application abroad, any post abroad, okay? There are designated registration centers outside the post, of course, uh, but that depends really on the post. If the post is able to uh, establish a uh, registration center outside of the embassy or the consulate, then you can do your registration there. In the Philippines, we also have designated uh, registration centers. Right now, uh, well, during the pandemic, the only registration center that was open in the Philippines was the main office of Comelec in Intramuros, if you've heard of that place. So it's just Intramuros. Uh, ordinarily, in better times, we're open in any of the government agencies that cater to the needs of overseas workers. So we have we have registration centers in, in OWA, we have registration centers in POEA, and so on. Okay. And then if you're going to apply for transfer from the post to the Philippines for domestic voting, you can basically apply anywhere, right? You can apply anywhere but your papers are going to like uh, go through uh, the OVS system 
but in the first instance, you can be at any registration center in the Philippines. All right. So the all important requirements for registration. If you're a Filipino citizen, you need a valid Philippine passport, right? In the absence of a valid passport, you need a certification from the DFA that, the, number one, the DFA has reviewed the documents submitted by you and that they have been found sufficient to warrant the issuance of a passport, okay? Um, basically, what we're saying here is if you can have a passport but don't have it, just prove that you can get the passport. As long as, we, as, long as you get the uh, certification from the DFA that uh, ordinarily you would be issued a passport, but for some reason you haven't yet, then that's fine. You will be allowed to register, okay? If you're a dual citizen, you have to show the order of approval to retain or reacquire Filipino citizenship issued by the post, right? You have to uh, also present an identification certificate issued by the post or the Philippine Bureau of Immigration. This is just to make sure that you are in fact uh, carrying Filipino citizenship. If you're a seafarer, then you basically need your photocopy of your seaman's book and any other pertinent document that the post might require. So these are the basic requirements for registration. They're very easy to get. Um, and, and I think for the most part, uh, people have been uh, able to provide uh, these documentations uh, with, with very little problem. So when can you register? Well, registration is ongoing now and it will end on September 30, 2021, which means that's mm, roughly two months from now, a little over two months from now, okay? But if you're transferring from the post to the local registry, meaning to say you used to vote OVS, but intend to vote in the Philippines in the next elections, you have a different deadline. The deadline for that is August 31, 2021, right? So uh, registration certification until September 30. Transfer of registration from post to post, meaning to say you're still abroad, then that's September 30 then. That's your deadline, that's still your deadline. If you need to change your name due to marriage or through court order or correction of entries or a change of address, all of these transactions, all of these transactions will deadline on September 30, 2021. Right? And here's what I was saying. When you transfer from the post, you need to say from an overseas uh, voting system to the Philippines, you're going to vote locally. Then, your deadline is sooner, August 31, 2021. And please note that it can be filed only in the Philippines, right? Only in the Philippines. Okay, the reason, the reason I'm, I'm emphasizing this is because due to the pandemic, a lot of overseas workers have found themselves repatriated to the Philippines, right? So a lot of them have found themselves stuck in the Philippines and unsure of whether, the, whether or not they would be able to fly back out. So this is very critical because there are a lot of them and well, the deadline is approaching really, really fast. So this is very important. If you, if you talk to anyone, maybe you can share this information to them. If you're transferring from the overseas voting system to the local voting system, then you have until August 31 to do it. Okay, we're gonna skip that because a lot of these are closed. And voter registration. Okay, um, here's how you register. Uh, first of all, uh, we have a registration form that basically fits all, right? These are the different types of applications. You can register as a voter or get certified as an overseas voter. You can, you can file an application for the recapture of biometrics. You can file an application for the transfer of registration records. You can file an application for reinstatement. That's when natanggal ka na sa listahan, pero gusto mong ibalik ikaw. 
Then you have change of name by reason of marriage or court order or correction of entries and a request to withdraw the application and reactivation. Reactivation is necessary when you've missed two elections in a row and your name has been basically placed on the dormant list. Okay. Um, so you can get your, your OVF form, your, your overseas voter registration form at the post, or you can download it from the website, website of Comelec. It's at HTTPS comelec.gov.ph. You can download it from the website of the DFA or the website of the post, whether consulate or embassy, or you can use the online iRegistro facility of the Comelec. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please, I'd, I'd, I'd gladly describe that site to you. All right. So basically, these are the things that you really need to understand for voter registration. First of all, if you're overseas and if you intend to vote uh, in the coming elections, then you're probably qualified, right? As long as you're in, uh, as long as you're uh, abroad during the voting period, which is 30 days before election day in the Philippines, right? You have to be 18 years old, you have to be a Filipino citizen, and you have to be not disqualified by law. The process is simple. Go register at the post using application forms that you can secure from the website or from the post itself, right? All you need are um, proof of your, of your address and your identity, okay? So you secure and submit an accomplished form. You submit the form to the, to the representative of the commission in the post. And what they do is they determine your identity based on your documentation and check to make sure that you're not registered yet. And then they will capture your biometrics, right? The biometrics are your face, your fingerprints, and an electronic recording of your physical signature, okay? So that's, those are the three kinds of biometrics you gather. Your face, your fingerprint, and an impression of your signature. You've seen those signature pads for, for credit cards, right? It's like that. All right. And then finally, an oath is, is administered. You swear, you swear an oath and you get issued an acknowledgement receipt. This, ladies and gentlemen, is, an, is voter registration in a nutshell. So if there are any questions, I'd gladly answer them because I think we, I would like to give more time to these questions so that we'll have a more fruitful, more meaningful discussion of the issues that are really important to you. This PowerPoint presentation is available at the embassy. You can get a copy of it at any time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director James. That was a very, very uh, enlightening and uh, uh, fruitful presentation. Uh, we are now open for uh, questions to, uh, from the from our participants, both on Facebook and uh, here in the, our chat. Uh, also, we have a WhatsApp line, so please do not uh, hesitate to ask your questions. Now, I I received some questions you, uh, while you were presenting. Okay. Uh, so I will uh, ask it in the way it is. Uh, well, message to me. Ano po ang botohan sa Singapore? I think ah. they're pertaining to the mode of voting, director. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ang ang voting po natin kasi. Um, I guess the question was asked in Filipino, so I'll answer in Filipino, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So um. We have different modes of voting po kasi. May iba't ibang paraan ng pagboto, no? And and uh, pangkaraniwan, yung paraan ng pagboto na yan, nakadepende yan doon sa lugar kung saan nagaganap yung botohan. Right? In in Singapore, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the mode of voting has always been personal. Yes, no? sir. And, uh, uh, personal. Actually, hybrid po. May, hybrid. I think we, we did the hybrid uh, setup, sir. But more right. on in person, yeah. Right. So yon. So you're able to you're able to actually go 
to the embassy and you accept ano no mail voting tama ba yes sir oh we, we send out the mail in ballots din po kami right so now, now here's the thing though every elections nagbabago yan every elections nagbabago yung style ng voting so yung yung dinidescribe ko sa inyo yung dinidescribe namin ni Wilfred sa inyo that was done in 2019 no guarantee if it's what's going to be used in 2022 no that decision is still to be made uh, and and that decision will probably be made around november and we'll make that announcement in november but here's the thing if you've already done it a certain way before you're likely to do it the same way this time so if you're going to prepare to conduct elections or to participate in elections you might as well prepare for how you did it in the last elections which is again the best way really is personal voting if 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 that's available to you if 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 your choice is postal voting then you have to make sure na yung address na binigay mo sa embassy eh tama okay kasi yun ang malaking problema natin eh ang malaking problema natin and, and hindi lang siguro to nangyayari sa Singapore no uh, but worldwide the problem is that sometimes we have wrong addresses this is ad these are addresses given by the voter themselves e kaso lumipat na ng tirahan they've changed residences or for some reason they've changed addresses and they failed to notify the embassy or consulate so on election day they receive a ballot at their old address where they no longer are and so that that ballot comes back to the embassy and it's returned to sender right or, or in, in common like jargon RT, rts sayang right and you end up unable to vote okay so please if you're going to vote via mail take the extra effort to change your address with the embassy para alam nila where to send the mail ha huh? tulong-tulong tayo okay Uh, in our chat, we have a question. Uh -huh. uh, what is the iRegistro online facility? Okay, very good. I am glad you asked me that. The iRegistro online facility is a way of filling up the forms online. You, you, you don't have to um, actually get a piece of paper form, right? Just go to the Comelec website, go to the overseas voting page, Go to the iRegistro tab there and then fill out the information, right? It's like, I know you're familiar with this. It's like a Google Forms. So it, 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 it prompts you what your name is, uh, what your address is, and so on and so forth. And then at the end of the process, you click Submit. It will output a file that is formatted to look like an actual application form. Right? So once you fill up the form online, you download the PDF, right? And then you print the PDF. That printed form, you can now take that to the embassy or consulate, and that's the form that you're going to apply with. What does this do? This prevent, this, this helps you uh, by making the process simpler because you don't have to go to the embassy at the first instance. You can do this at home. You can actually do this at home or in the office and you can print the form there and you don't have to fill out the form at the embassy or consulate. This will allow you to sidestep the long lines and the long waits, okay? Also, during the pandemic, this is very critical because you'll be safer when you're away from other people, right? You, there, you'll, you'll have social distancing there because you can do this while you're all alone. Important thing to note though, number one, on the form itself, there is, a, there is a section that asks you to swear an oath and to sign your name to that oath. Do not sign that oath, right? You can only sign that oath in front of the administering officer in the embassy or consulate, okay? If you go in there with your form and that oath is signed, they're going to ask you to do it again. Right? So don't sign that oath. Number two, when you print the form, 
make sure that you print it back to back, right? Back to back. So it's three pages with six faces, right? So it's page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six. Okay, that's three copies, right? It's on long bond paper, eight and a half across by 13 inches vertical. Long bond paper, right? I think that's called legal in the Philippines. I'm not sure if that's legal size in, in Singapore as well. But it's eight and a half by 13 inches, right? So you print it on eight and a half by 13 inches, print it back to back. Number two, don't sign the oath, right? Number three. When you're required to show an ID, make sure that you bring a photocopy of the ID, okay? Obviously, the embassy or the consulate will be able to photocopy that for you. But do you really want to wait, <laughs> right? Because they'll be doing other things, man. They'll be doing other things. So you might as well photocopy before you go so that when you come to the embassy or consulate, you have these three things. You have your signed form in triplicate and a photocopy of your identification documents. That's what you need in order to register using iregistro.comelec.gov. Uh, proof, just to add, just as a proof of identification, we generally accept only the Philippine passport, your current there you go. passport. So, there you go. so please take note of that. Then a follow-up question is personal appearance needed? I guess you answered this. This is a yes. You have to, yes. Um, I, I, I'd like to say why. You need to be personally present because you need to give your biometrics. No, you need to, you need to register your biometrics. The problem with biometrics, there's no remote way of capturing it. Like I can show you my fingerprint now, but there's no way you can record it, right? So you're going to have to go there and record it on site. So that's why you have to go and be personally present. Next question, director. Yes, sir. Um, I guess this is a, he's a seaman. Okay, their, their vessel is all on the way currently to Malaysia. We are, we are tuning, we are tuned in. Hello. Paano po ang mga seaman? Nakarehistro po ako sa amin sa Leyte. Mm. Pag ganyan po, pwede kayo magparehistro wherever you make port of call. So kunwari, magpo-port of call kayo sa Malaysia, at may panahon kayo, may shore leave kayo ng konti, pwede kayong sumadya sa embassy sa Malaysia at kayo ay magpatala bilang seafarer. Okay? Ito po ay special privilege ng mga seafarer. For the rest of, of uh, Filipinos overseas, they have to register kung saan sila nakatira. So kung nakatira ka sa Malaysia, pwede ka sa Malaysia, hindi ka pwede magparehistro sa Singapore. Pero kung seafarer ka at lumanding ka sa Malaysia or lumanding ka sa Djibouti, pwede ka magparehistro in either of those places as long as merong embassy or consulate doon. Again, this is a privilege that's available only to seafarers. I would suggest po, kung tiga Leyte kayo at registrado kayo sa Leyte, ay magpa-overseas voting na po kayo. Pag, pag, uh, ano, pag uh, daong nyo sa Malaysia, sadyain, sadyain ninyo, napakabilis lang naman ng proseso. Just make sure you bring a photocopy of your seaman's book and any other information, any other um, documentary information that you might have that can uh, prove your identity. Okay. But for voting, how, how do they do that? They can vote at any... Ganun din. Vote anywhere din sila. Oo. Oh, oh. Pag oh. voting ng ano, seafarers, vote anywhere din. Doesn't matter kung saan ka nagparehistro. Again, because naitindihan natin na medyo mahirap ischedule ang voting kung ikaw ay seafarer at kailangan ka nakatali ka sa isang lugar. No? So, sinusundan natin yung mismong butante. Oh, Thank you, Director. Next question. Ah, okay. We have uh, hey, yeah, the question you know. in the chat. And, and the OFW, OFW, unfortunately, was suddenly repatriated back to the Philippines after the deadline of the local registration. Is there a chance that you can still vote next year? Thank you, Po. Kung, kung na repatriate po kayo bigla bigla after uh -huh. August 31, ikinalulungkot ko po, wala pa tayong solusyon para dyan. Although, na-bring up na yan sa ating komisyon. Nabanggit na namin na may posibilidad na kahit uh, September 1, 
bigla ka na reassign sa Pilipinas, anong gagawin mo? Uh, sa so pinag-uusapan na po nila yan, ng mga bossing natin sa sa COMELEC, uh, they're, they're discussing it, they're finding a legal way of still allowing you to vote. And we hope that we come up with a solution soon because there are still a lot of Filipinos that are actually very anxious about this, Wilford. They're very anxious about the possibility of sudden repatriation. And we understand, no? Um, it's not their fault. Um, well, it's not, it's not anybody's fault, really. Um, a lot of it is a pressure from the pandemic. Uh, so we're doing our best to, to come up with a solution for that. But unfortunately for now, uh, there is no solution yet. But the only guarantee I can give you is that we're working on the legal aspect of the problem. Okay. Thank you, Director. Next question. What happened to the voter's ID? What is our proof that we can vote? Okay. What is our proof that we can vote without the voter's ID? Well, we don't, rec we don't uh, require a voter ID in order to vote, ma'am. Again, uh, like, like uh, Wilford said, you just need to show your passport. The idea is that every embassy, every consulate, they have access to what is known as the NLRV or the National List of Registered Voters, which means if you're a registered voter, your name is on that list. So all you need to do is show your passport and then we'll check it against that list. If you're on that list, then you're a registered voter, you can vote. Unfortunately, ma'am, we don't issue voter IDs anymore. So wala po tayong voter ID. Um, is it, director, is it the national ID that, that what is the reason for stopping this? Uh, yeah, voter yeah. ID? tama ka. It's, it's the national ID, you know? Um, when the national ID was conceptualized, the idea was that all of these functions would be unified under one document, which is the national ID. Uh, unfortunately, the national ID is running into problems, uh, getting started. Um, so it's been in the works like for several years now, and only a few hundred thousand have been issued. Uh, so a lot of people are feeling the pressure from that. But again, whether or not, whether or not, uh, that's issued to you, it really won't matter for now because for now, the, the basis really is our records. So all you need to do is show any valid ID in the case of, of the posts, the passport, and we can identify you from that. Comment from the chat box. In Singapore, it's close to impossible to find a long bond paper. A4 usually. Yeah, uh, usually A4. Na. Unless you buy on Kabuk from Pinas. Hopefully, we'll allow flexibility from I registro in the future. Thanks, this from is, Dr. Eugene. This is good local knowledge. I'll bring it up. Um, I, I guess we assume that that uh, that long bond paper is available everywhere. But uh, clearly, if it isn't, then we'll find a workaround. Sige po, um, I'll get back in touch with, with Wilford uh, immediately after this. Uh, we'll give guidance on that. Uh, as an alternative na rin po for, uh, for the benefit of our listeners, if you fail to download the, your iRehistro document um, or, or was not able to access iRehistro, pwede na po kami mag-print nun sa embassy. We do that for you na po, na kami na mag-print ng iRehistro. Uh, Wala lang long ban sa embassy. <laughs> <laughs> Ay pa pa, no? meron na yan. Next, uh, ano po ang ka ka kaibahan ng application for registration sa application for certification as an overseas voter? Um, for practical purposes, wala naman. Ano? Yung registration, that's the first time na magpapatala ka as a registered voter. Certification, ibig sabihin, registered ka na, ini, parang ano mo lang, uh, kinoconfirm mo lang na ikaw ay registered voter. But it's practically the same thing. Okay. Um, next question. Uh, I failed to vote in a barangay election and the last year, last, se, last national election of senators. Am I still active? as a voter in Singapore? Wala naman po tayong barangay elections for overseas voting. Uh, uh -huh. Hindi po tayo nagvote ng local. So, okay lang yan. Uh, for, for overseas voting, the rule applies only to the national elections. No? 
So yung 2019 and 2016. Right? Oh. But since since we don't vote barangay sa sa local sa ano sa overseas voting not counted yung pagkaka miss mo noon. All right. So mo, most likely director he's still active. Most likely you can still vote. Yes. Um, I, I have a last two questions here. Um, okay, from Eleanor, ang sabi ay... Wait lang, na, na garbon yung kanya. ID. Ah, ito na lang po sa, ano muna, sa chat muna. Is there an online platform that your status as a voter can be checked or confirmed? Klaus Aureola. Of yeah, PSME. Klaus, wala, unfortunately, no. Um, due to security concerns, yung ating online checker will only be open mga two two months before elections, right? So the best thing that you can do right now is to really call the post and inquire about your status as a registered voter. Okay, may mga procedure ang bawat post kanya kanyang procedure yan, um, but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to muscle through that talaga. Kasi yung, yung online checker, that's not available for now. Sensya na. Uh, okay, I found a question. Good evening, Mr. James. Uh, just a question of practicality. Sige the po. end of registration for overseas voters is September 31. But election is on April. Why not shorten the gap between end of registration and the voting period? Para ho, o may, mag, may, may kailangan, may kailangan maalis o umalis ay makalipat at makarehistro pa. Thanks much. Oo. Salamat. Uh, that's a very good question. In fact, every election period, pinaglalabanan yung issue na yan. No? Um, people always ask for an extension. People always say that uh, they need more time to register. Unfortunately, we also need time to, to finalize the list of voters. Ang problema kasi is, in order to send supplies to the posts, we need to know exactly how many voters there are. And if that, if, if that number, how many voters there are, is a moving target, then we're never going to be able to get ready for the elections. Okay? One, of, one, of the main, one of the characteristics of Philippine elections is that we only print as many ballots as there are voters. Okay? So if there are 100 voters, we can only print 100 ballots. So we need to know ahead of time how many voters there are. If we print 100 ballots and it turns out there are 150 voters, mas short tayo, right? If we if we print 150, turns out only 100, we'd be violating the law, right? So so we need to stop the voting registration process early, so that all of the other preparatory activities that that need to take place, including printing of ballots allocation of, of election supplies, all of that can be accomplished in time for April, uh, for the April start of voting period. Okay. Uh, question in the chat, kailan po pwedeng magpunta sa Singapore Embassy to file our for registration? Ako Ayan. na po sasagot, Director. Yes. <laughs> uh, bukas, po ang, uh, bukas po ang embahada nyo. Uh, Monday to Friday, and in fact, we have already scheduled uh, Sunday special days for registration alone. Um, like this Sunday, is uh, we have regular service plus registration. July 25 is another special registration day. For the month of August, we will be opening the embassy for registration purposes only, Saturdays and Sundays. All Saturdays and Sundays, magbubukas po ang embahada, pati ho sa September. So please find the time to drop by and uh, register. Just bring your uh, current valid passport. Meron po tayong uh, appointment system. Uh, please log on to the website of the Philippine Embassy. You will find our, well, uh, our appointment system there. Kuha na lang po ng slots. Um, we also are going to be, we will be saying this on the, on the third leg, but for PhilCom uh, registration, Philippine community members, meron po kayong, bibigyan po kayo ng special slots or slots on the, on the, on the weekend para ho, as a group, you can register. As an organization, you can register po with, together with your members. Yun. So wow, we're so open. You have weekend registration pala, sir. 
<clears throat> yes, uh, provided that they set an appointment and uh, they have uh, and uh, they they have their passports with them. Yeah, plus the I registro, ganun po. Uh, it's all in the website. Our uh, registration requirements. That's awesome. That's awesome. Due to the pand uh, next question, director. Due to the pandemic and the rules of Singapore, key is keep on changing. What will be the procedure of voting next year po at Polo Singapore? And oh, yeah. the sir, well, <laughs> nasagot na kanina, nasagot na kanina Klaus na I think by November pa po ma-determine ang uh, mode of voting dito right. sa Singapore. Um, but uh, for your um, uh, information, uh, post requested a hybrid um, of both in-person and uh, mail-in ballot. Uh, system para ho may flexibility kayo kung talagang hindi makapunta during the 30 day period you can mail back your ballots oh uh, just a reminder sir wilford dagdag ko lang no if you're going to choose the the postal voting option make sure that your address is updated huh? yes. make sure that yes. your address is updated diyan tayo nagkaka problema eh pag nag-request ka ng postal voting and your ball and your address is not updated then your old address is going to get your ballot, but not you. And you won't be able to vote and you'll be mad. So don't. Yes. So please update your address. We, uh, based on last election's uh, experience, we were we did a parang Google Forms update. Pinos po namin sa website at sa Facebook. Na if uh, you intend to vote by mail, please update your address so that we can send a mail the ba your ballot uh, to your correct and updated address at maibalik nyo po sa embassy through mail din po. Uh, otherwise, uh, in-person uh, voting is also um, will also be conducted. Yun po. Uh, sir, uh, good evening. Uh, sir, follow-up question. Plus, are you po? Uh, sir, to sir, sir Wong, yes, uh, oh. what if po uh, uh, people is, most most of us prefer yung, yung ano, uh, person person to person vote, voting eh doon po sa regulation dito sa Singapore yung tipong capacity ng ano do we have time or do you do you have like a okay uh, these people is only mail these people you can visit pan pan po bang arrangement noon kasi uh, hindi po. Oh. okay go ahead sige po nga po eh kaya mostly people yata gusto pumunta sa embahada para mag -vote. Para ma -feel na yes, 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 we feel your sentiments po. Actually, we uh, the embassy first and foremost will be working with the host government, the government of Singapore, to inform them that the embassy will be conducting their elections uh, from April to May. And uh, we expect that there would be an influx of people. But despite the influx, we will we will ensure host government and you and you our kababayans that we will be implementing safe distancing measures um, during the whole process of uh, the voting. So, yun po. Um, so, you don't have to worry. Uh, hopefully, next year, medyo lahat tayo dito sa Singapore, bakunado na. Yes, pa. Uh, may, medyo makapag, may laya na tayong makapunta. No? Hopefully, po. Yeah. Yeah. Right. At saka, remember, ha, Klaus? Yes, 30 pa. days naman ang registration, ang voting period. So, medyo uh, makapag. Oh, I just want to show you ano yung capacity kung mare ng Singapore. Oh, fifty lang a day ang pwede. So unahan po yun sa pag-register. Ja, tapos hindi kami pwede ng ano. Tapos may timing lang po. And then how many how many OFWs are we have here in Singapore? Eh, the one month might be not enough. In lang po. Oh, I see, I see. Well, I'm sure the embassy will be able to schedule you properly. And katulad ng ano nabanggit ni ano ni Sir Wilford. By next year, you have a chance of being like majority vaccinated, na eh. Yeah, okay? yeah. So, so hopefully, mag flexibility. Yeah. Hopefully, the Singapore government may be relaxed on this uh, matter. Right. Okay. Sa Pilipinas nga, that's a two percent palang ata kami. Ay, opo, medyo mabilis nga po dito. Okay, thank you po, Sir Wong, thank and uh, thank you po. Uh, okay, see you in the embassy. Minutes. Sir Klaus, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Right. <laughs> Okay, so I guess uh, that uh, ends our question and answer portion, um, Ms. Mini. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Director James. Do you have any final words or, or message to our kababayans here in Singapore? 
Well, nagpapasalamat lang ako kay, kay Ginoong Klos, no? Uh, and I think he's representative of, of the Filipinos in, in, in Singapore uh, being eager to really participate in the elections to come. It's very important that, that we, each of us, individually, are invested in, in this democratic exercise. So it's very important na magparehistro po tayo. So nabanggit na kanina yung uh, registration schedules. Please make sure to take advantage of that. But please be safe when you're registering. No? There are a lot of safety protocols in place. Make sure that you are compliant with all of them because we all want to be individually responsible for our safety. When we're all individually responsible, then we're all safe together. Right? So thank you very much uh, to uh, uh, Mamini, Sir Wilford, regards kay Amba. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Director. I'll see you for our Philcom event uh, on the yes. end of the month. And that's uh, so the yeah. Bayanian Center, uh, Ms. Mini. We turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Magandang gabi po. Thank you po. Thank you po na madami. Thank you very much, Director James and Wilford, for that very informative and comprehensive presentation and discussion. We hope everyone is encouraged to register and exercise their right to vote in the coming election. So please po, note registration period. So embassy po is on, the Philippine embassy is ongoing up to September 30, 2021. So please exercise the right to vote. So, um, so may I now invite uh, Ms. Christy Vicentina, PBSS Honorary Vice President, to deliver the closing remarks. Christy, please. Thank you. Good evening to our friends and kababayans in Singapore, to our friends and families in the Philippines, mabuhay. On behalf of Philippine Bayani and Society Singapore, allow me to say thank you to the people who helped us for tonight's webinar. Thank you, Director James Jimenez. Maraming salamat po for sharing your time and expertise for tonight. Generously sharing, if I may emphasize. Sana po, we were able to answer all your questions tonight. If you have additional questions, you may also tune in to Comelec Hour in your uh, DCRH area. It's every Saturday at 3 p.m. And if you have not registered yet for the overseas absentee voting, let's do it now. And let us make ourselves counted as we aim and dream bigger for our motherland. Tara na po. Special thank you too to Mr. Will uh, Wong or Will Ford Wong. Thank you, Will, for uh, joining us tonight as co-moderator and making the conversation livelier. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat to all our friends who always help us share and promote our webinars. Philippine Embassy Singapore, led by His Excellency Ambassador Joseph Del Maria, Lynn of CDE, Faust, Millet of FAST, Ms. Clemens of Overseas Skills Program and Services, Rated J, FAS, UAP, Ateneo LSE, Kabayanihan, and BNG. If I may invite you, uh, Team BNG or Business Network Group donates every for every runner, they will donate a dollar to Philippine Bayanihan Society. So let us all run as one community, as one healthy community. Shepre, maraming salamat po to all our participants in Zoom and to all who joined us through Facebook and for making our event tonight a success event. So maraming salamat and don't forget to click that like button for us. Again, good evening and mabuhay. Thank you. Thank you, Christy, for that. Great. <laughs> Marami salama po. Please don't forget to register. Um, for people who wish to visit the Bayanihan Center, it is located at 43 Pasir Panjing Road, and the nearest MRT station is Labrador, M Labrador Park MRT. Please email us at bayanihancenter at singnet.com.sg or call at 6474-3700 for any inquiry. Also, please like our Facebook page 
That's facebook.com slash Bayanihan Society SG. And follow us on Instagram at Bayanihan Society SG. Also, we please support us by donating via giving.sg slash PBSS. In addition, we, you can also support the society by sponsoring advertising in our webinars and projects. For details, please email Cecil or Mindy at Bainihan Center. We do have more activities this year. Just to let you know, our Bainihan lecture is coming. That will be on August 29, 2021. And our keynote speaker is Father Aristotle C.D. SJPH with a PhD. He's the president of ERDA Foundation and also president of Savior School. His topic will be by his topic will be by Nihan, uh, by Nihan during this pandemic period as well. So thank you all very much for joining us today. We hope this has been a fruitful discussion for each one of you. The next webinar is on July 22nd, another next Thursday. And the topic is Health and Nutrition 101, an unreal journey. Guest speakers are Mr. Aldrin Mercado, current Philippine national rugby player, and is also bodybuilding body enthusiast and co-founder of Brickhouse Gym Singapore. And the other speaker is Mr. Gareth Fairhead, co-founder and senior trainer of Unreal Personal Training. So please mark the date for the Bainian lecture that's on August 29, 3 to 5 p.m. Thank you again to our speaker, guest speaker, and our guest moderator, uh, Director James Jimenez and Mr. Wilford Wong for this presentation that hopefully will encourage everyone to register. Thank you. For that, you right to vote, exercise it. Not everyone can do it, so take advantage of it. So this is Minerva Lau, and together with the board and staff of Philippine Bainia Society, Singapore, we say thank you and for joining us tonight and see you at the next webinar. Please keep well, keep safe, Please keep safe again because there are some cases now and please wear masks when outside and safe distancing always. Good night and God bless.